Purchase premium printer plagued by pesky first pass. Perfect print turns pasta party, Corality's chaotic curveball, and jagged corners leave user completely confused. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 206. Let's get into it. Starting off with something a little bit different this week. It's not a print failure. It's a potential print solution. We've talked a lot recently about the Bamboo Lab A1 and P1S machines that have their NTC thermistor, which I've incorrectly said were metal oxide varistors previously, fail and cause burning and melting of the actual machines themselves. We had a user reach out to us with a really interesting solution. I wanted to show it to you guys and see about getting some feedback as well. This comes to us from one of our fans in our Patreon Discord who designed and built this entire contraption that holds an off-the-shelf standard smoke detector with a really long cable lead and a really, really fancy end connector. And also, really nice cable! Like, everything here feels super, super premium. That then goes to this box. This box, as you can see, has power in, power out, a reset button, a couple of fuses, and the connection for the smoke detector. This is a smoke detector actuated switch that fully latches so that when the smoke detector goes off, you must hit this reset button, which has a very satisfying click to be able to turn it all back on. So whether it is a small little smoking issue like we've seen in these A1 and P1Ss, or it is a larger issue, this will cut power. Now this is just a prototype and I don't know how much this cost, but I can tell you it's not cheap. Everything on here is like super freaking premium. The case, that's metal. This is a whole metal case, probably a little bit larger than it needs to be, but wanted to get your all's feedback on this. I think it's super freaking cool and it works with a standard off the shelf freaking smoke detector. That is super awesome. And we're going to be testing this a little bit. There are some hurdles into getting this into the market, one of them being UL testing, but I'd love to get your all's feedback onto a product like this. Would you use this and what would you pay for something like this? Because personally, I think it's super cool. Let me know what you think. And quite frankly, I think it's a really unique solution to using like an internet connected system that has some potential failures, one of them being Wi-Fi connection. This is a completely connected system. It's kind of cool. And especially for those that aren't very technologically savvy or those that do want to run a full 20 amps through this at 120 volts, you could easily put an entire power bar on that and run it just fine. But I think it's really cool. Love to know your all's thoughts down below. But my name's Grant. This is 3D Musketeers and Print Fix Friday, where we help your printers get back to printing with purpose. If you're running into issues with your 3D printers, please reach out to us on all the social medias, film a YouTube video, tag us in that description. We'll do our best to help you out. And if you are dealing with issues with your A1 or P1S that are involving that NTC thermistor, please reach out to us via email we are collecting these so that we can have them professionally tested and analyzed to determine why the failure mode occurs. And we'll cover all costs associated with it. We are doing heavy research here and want to understand why this fails so we can make you all safer. But starting off, we've got a Prusa XL with some first layer problems. They're using the 0.4 brass nozzle and well, it just isn't working right. Let's take a look. So we've got a bed here that... Eh, eh, eh. You know, not the greatest, but the first layer looks good, except for this back corner. And we can see that eventually it just ends up pulling up the entire line and well, looking like crap. We can see that it is reprobing over and over and over in certain areas, which is fine. This is a normal thing with the XL. What it's currently doing is booping the bed to make sure that everything is where it should be. If it falls outside of the range of expected values, it will go and probe right around that point as well and kind of take an average of it. This could be from crap underneath the build plate, or it could just be that things aren't perfectly aligned. Because the Prusa XL uses a dual Z system, it is possible that one could be slightly higher than the other, causing the bed to be at a slight angle. And we can see that it is 
too close on the right, and too far on that back left. I think the actual bed itself is slightly tilted, and it's tilted more than the machine is able to deal with. So a great way to check this is to go ahead and get the tool head out of the way, turn off the motors, and then physically, which I know this is going to be weird, but I want you to turn the actual lead screws so that the Z-axis contacts the plastic parts at the top of the Z-axis. This will ensure that it is at the exact same position. My best guess is that either the right side of the printer is too high or the left side is too low. Could be a combination of the two, but that is likely what is causing these issues. And because the machine is only able to deal with slop so much, this is what we end up with. The other thing that I would point out, if you are having issues specifically with the Prusa smooth plate, something that we dealt with and we constantly deal with here in Florida, Somebody. it's a humidity thing. If your smooth plates and your satin plates for some reason just stop sticking, heat them up a lot. It seems to help. Jacob from Construct 3D actually mentioned this in a podcast a while back, and I completely forget which number it was, but if you like listening to myself and Jacob hang out for hours on end talking about industry topics, business topics, and with our most recent podcast episode, leaking some features from Construct 2, the latest machine to come out of Construct 3D, which they are taking some pre-order signups for. So if you're interested in it, you can check them out. Links are below. But Jacob said to basically bake the build plates because water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. If you put your build plate to 110, in theory, a lot of that moisture should come out of that heat bed. And we see that it does. It results in slightly better first layers for us, which is awesome. But what we found works the best is a magic eraser. Just use a magic eraser on that build plate and that scuffs it up ever so slightly. If you don't want to spend the money on legitimate magic racers, you can go ahead and use melamine foam. It's the same thing. I will say that there have been some studies coming out that show that they just release gobs of microplastics, but you're cleaning a 3D printer, which also releases gobs of microplastics. So, but from there, you're going to want to get that Z all the way up till it's hitting these plastic parts here. There'll be one on each side. Then you go into the settings menu and then tell the printer to move the Z axis down, which is in the positive direction. Eh, don't worry about it. It's in the positive direction. Move it down some. So when the print head comes back out, that it doesn't contact that build plate. Run the same print. Everything should be okay, but I think that's what's going on here. If it continues to persist, check the mounts for the bed itself. I'll show you on mine so you can get a better idea. On the bottom of the XL here, we have one side that is able to rock some, okay? And the other side is not. It's not, it is locked hard in, whereas on this side, it can move a little bit. Make sure that that is tight. That way you shouldn't have any issues with it. But be careful on these because if you don't have it at the right tension, the bed can actually be tilted in the wrong direction. So check to make sure that this is right, that your mounts up here are good as well. And then of course, check to make sure that every one of your bed tiles are in good shape as well. And so I hope that helps. Moving on to a K1SE that's well, running into some printer issues. Print looks great until it turns into mom spaghetti. Mom spaghetti. And the entire front cover falls off. This is one of those cases where it's like, I thought that Creality just copied bamboo on this so they would know when the front cover falls off, but I guess they don't know. The user is wondering what actually happened. And while I know what's wrong with it, ain't got no gas in it. <laughs> or more specifically, it probably had a partial clog that it ended up pushing through. It tried to print, but it was printing in air. That air turned into spaghetti. That spaghetti turned into knocking your parts off the build plate and then knocking the front off of your printer. Theoretically, as long as the connector itself is fine, the female side of the connector is fine as well, you should be okay. This is just what happens from time to time. Machines can get clogged, and this is a silk material which isn't notorious for clogging, but if you are running it a little too cold, you might end up with some extra extruder back pressure, and specifically when we're looking at these supports, silk has a tendency to expand in the barrel of a printer, so it's like in the hot end barrel of a machine. If you have too many retractions with silk, 
it can clog on the cold side and keep it from moving forward down. Eventually, your printer might have enough force to push its way through, and that could be what happened here. The organic or tree supports, whatever you want to call them, are often notorious for causing this issue. If this is an issue that you're seeing with your machines, just up the perimeters on those supports. You can also check to make sure, does it even actually need the freaking supports? In my opinion, if the supports are less than like two millimeters square when they touch the part, I didn't need them in the first place. The printer can bridge that. And even if it is a complete overhang, I can just cut that little one layer bit off that's not gonna look good and the rest of the part looks perfectly fine. Don't waste time on supports you don't need. Reminds me that we probably should do a support video at some point here because this is an important thing for people to learn. There are many areas where support just doesn't matter and you don't need it. And it's wasting material, it's wasting time. And especially when you're dealing with organic supports, it adds a lot of chance of failure to your components. Moving on, we have a K2 plus corner issue where the edges of these corners look like crap. Normally, I would have the exact answer on how to deal with this, but I too am dealing with this and I don't exactly know what to do. So I'm going to ask you guys, the community, help me because I don't know and neither does this person. So traditionally, I would say that this is a pressure advance setting that we can basically see that as it comes to every corner, the pressure advance is stopping the flow effectively too early and it ends up looking like crap. But if I'm correct, this only happens in one direction because I have this issue on one of our printers and I don't know why. For those that keep an eye on our background and what the shop looks like, you might have noticed that above me is no longer a lulzbot. It is a pair of GD plus fours. One of those plus fours has this problem. If I put the G code into that plus four, it has that problem. If I put it into the plus four next to it, it's perfectly fine. We can even change the nozzles over and it's the same problem. It is a machine related issue. I've checked steps per millimeter. That's not it. I've tuned pressure advance. That's not it. The machines have basically the same pressure advance. From what we can see, it appears to be somewhat speed based and pressure advance. It could be caused when you're running your filament too close to the edge of what it's capable of doing. If we cut our speed down to 50%, the problem almost completely goes away. We'll still see a little bit, but it's nowhere near as bad. I don't know what causes this because it's only on one of the edges. So if we look, this is only on the edge that faces us. We can't see around the corner, but you'd be able to see it if it was on this backside corner as well. And it's not. That's the same issue that I have. It's only on one kind of side of the machine. We've checked belt tension. Belt tensions are identical between the machines. And so I don't know, and I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. We can see the three major comments here are saying retraction, Z seam, or PA. I've tried all of those things, and I know that they don't have a significant impact on something like this. So I don't freaking know. I want to believe it's pressure advance, because when I turn pressure advance off, the problem pretty much goes away, but now my corners look like crap because they're heavily over extruded. So I don't know. And that's why I'm gonna ask you guys, for the first time in a while, it's not often that we have ones that stump me as well. We'd love to know your thoughts down below, because yeah, look at it, the backside is absolutely perfect. The front side's what looks like crap. Some might say that resembles me a little bit, but in all seriousness, I could use some help. This user could use some help. I'll be looking in those comments. Let's see what we can do. Last but not least, a fail that is also really, really awesome. And I'm going full screen for this because you got to see this. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Stefan of CNC Kitchen recently got himself a Kronos 1.4 high-speed camera. And what do you do when you have a high-speed camera? You film everything at high speed. Milling is an absolute joy to watch in high speed. But I've never seen end mills break at high speed. That is just super freaking cool. I could watch this all day, how it just kind of locks up and you can see it try and try and try. And then the carbide says, <laughs> see you later, nerd. That's kind of the benefit of using high speed steel is that it doesn't generally do this. It just, you know, tends to bend and twist and be 
problems where carbide is very, very fragile, but it's also very strong. No real way to fix this. I'm sure it has to do with chip load or something that I don't know anything about when it comes to CNC milling. If you do, I don't know, put it in the comments. I just thought this was really cool and wanted to share it with you. And Stefan is an awesome creator who's put out some really cool videos lately. If you haven't seen or heard of his channel, do yourself a favor, go subscribe. We'll link to it in the description. And hey, while you're down there, make sure to check out our Patreon, PayPal, and YouTube channel members, where at the $5 tier and higher, you get your name listed right next to me. And at the $10 tier and higher, you get to come hang out in our private Discord server, where we've been sharing a lot of cool behind the scenes things that come out of the videos that we make and uh, have had some really awesome Patreon hangouts after the shows on Sundays. Don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed because it does help the channel grow. It doesn't cost you a thing. Uh, podcast channel coming soon. The live streams aren't going anywhere, but all the podcast content, oh, I think you're going to love it. If you watch the show, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. We talked about it a few times. That is all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Mosquitoes! F*** you, Florida! <laughs> Why? I have not been outside! I have not left my house in over 24 hours! How are there mosquitoes in my house? Ah! You're gonna use that as the outro. I know you are. <sighs>